Hello, who's a big dog? Hi, Ashley. Good evening. Hi, Jay. It's nice to see you. It's good seeing you. I know, it's been sort of a while, I suppose. How are you feeling? Kind of run down, I guess. Run down isn't tired? Well, I guess it's mentally and physically. Mm hmm Although one kind of led to the other. You're not getting sick, are you? No, no, but I had a shitty call with my parents last night and I didn't sleep well. Back up a little bit. What was the last thing we talked about? I think we were talking about at some point maybe I would write a letter, a second letter to my parents. Okay, like and physically I've, in the mail. Right, and, and so I've done that. I wrote them a second letter um, because what I sort of realized over December when I went to visit them is that Although they were calling me Snooks Pokes to my face, because it's sort of a whimsical nickname and playful, it's not really the kind of thing they would be referring to me as in front of other people. Right. So at that point I realized, oh, well, this is all just kind of a ruse then. And that, and that hurt because it meant that it was just like a, a facade where they were calling me by a nickname when I was in earshot, but once I... Almost but like a for, almost like a code name. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And as well, I did. I wasn't really sure if my parents knew just how much it hurt me when they misgendered me. I seem to recall you trying to tell them that at, at least twice. I did. I did try to do that, but what their takeaway seemed to be was that. The part that hurt was when they misgendered me in front of someone who didn't know I was trans and therefore outed me. And so, oh. of course, yes, that would be even worse. But even misgendering me in front of people who have known me for a while, that still hurts because it, it shows that they don't respect me for who I am. Oh, sure. So you this isn't the first letter you wrote. What was different in the second one? In the first one, I went over a lot of background of, or, or at least some background, of how I came up to myself and what it means to be trans, that kind of thing. Sort of the standard kind of things that you talk about with someone when you first come out to them. But with my parents, they just could never sit still long enough for me to tell them this. So do you think that they didn't read that whole letter the first time? Um... No, I think they read that part. Yeah. Okay. But that was, I mean, that, but that was in the, in the first letter. So, yeah. and then I touched on about how I would like for them to uh, start calling me Ashley and, and that kind of thing. One of the things I mentioned in that first letter as well is that they had kind of came upon calling me by a childhood nickname, Snooks Pooks, which I've had since I was a baby. It's just nonsense words. But, it's something that, even up until modern times, as, as it were, they, they had been calling me, albeit occasionally, and that was mm -hmm. fine. And so I said in that first letter that it's okay if you if you call me Stokes Pokes. I'm not saying you can't do that, but I'd like you to think about calling me Ashley. Mm -hmm. And so the th the thinking in their mind seemed to be, oh, well, she said we can we can call her Stokes Pokes, so let's mm -hmm. just do that. Mm -hmm. Because apparently they can't bear to call me Ashley. Mm -hmm. So in the second letter, one of the things I mentioned was, hey, Snooks Books is a nice nickname, but it's a nickname. Mm -hmm. And you can't call me that all the time. It's not a replacement for my name. And I, I more strongly asked them to call me Ashley. Do you mind reading that? Okay, sure. Dear Mom and Dad, I'm writing to you about my gender, and it would mean a lot to me if you would read through this letter. Being transgender isn't a walk in the park. It's not something I'd wish on, any on anyone. And the worst part is the gender dysphoria that comes with it. Gender dysphoria is the internal distress that transgender people feel from the dissonance between their sense of gender and the body they live in. My dysphoria has always been there, but some stretches have been worse than others. I've had some months where I felt like I was wearing shoes that were two sizes too small, while other months have felt like a serenade of claws against a chalkboard. 
My transition hasn't stamped out my dysphoria entirely, but gosh has it helped. In the years before my transition, I always had this feeling that something wasn't quite right, and it took me a long time to figure out what it was. I've been on hormone replacement therapy for about two and a half years, and I can't tell you how much happier I am these days. I know now that this is what life is supposed to feel like, and I also know that in the unlikely and hypothetical event that I ever had to untransition to go back to the way things were before, I don't think I'd be able to go on living. These days, when I buy groceries at the store and the clerk asks me, would you like paper or plastic, ma'am? That just feels right. I feel that I belong. But when someone refers to me with male pronouns, my gender dysphoria comes flooding back and it feels like the wind has been knocked out of me. And it hurts every single time. But I'm also thankful that those experiences are a rare thing these days. I think the last time anyone in Dallas called me by my former name or referred to me with male pronouns was about 14 months ago. I've always had a soft spot for Snooks Pooks. It's a lovely nickname. It's affectionate and playful and, for all I know, it might be the only person who has that nickname. But being as personal and as whimsical as it is, I'm not sure that you're referring to me as Snooks when you're talking with people like aunts and uncles and family friends. I get the feeling that you might be calling me Snooks when I'm in the room, but calling me birth name once I'm out of earshot. And I worry that if you call me birth name, or refer to me with male pronouns when you're talking to other people, they might feel confused about which name or pronouns they should be using for me. It's time for you to start calling me Ashley. I know that it's a big adjustment, but it's my name, and it's what everyone else calls me. Snooksbooks has a warm place in my heart, and I'm hoping you might still call me Snooksbooks now and again, but it loses its charm if it's the only name I hear. I'd love for Snooks Pokes to be a special nickname that I hear sometimes, but it's not a replacement for my name. I'm an adult, and I've changed my name, and I'd like you to call me by my name. If you'd like to visit me this summer, you need to accept the fact that you're visiting your daughter, Ashley. And if you can't reconcile yourself to visiting Ashley, then perhaps you may need to reconsider whether you'd like to come at all. Love, Ashley. I think you wrote that as, as gently as you possibly could. I didn't want to antagonize them, mm -hmm. but I needed to be firm with them. And so I'll, I'll do my best to balance those. Yeah. So it turns out that I mailed this letter to them two and a half weeks ago. And it so happened that my parents were leaving on a road trip to visit some family friends in nearby states. So I was hoping that the letter might get there before they left for this week-long road trip. Mm. But that didn't seem to happen. And then they got back from the road trip, and I thought, well, I guess they'll call me the day they get back. But they didn't call me for a few days, and it turns out that rather than having the neighbor kid pick up their mail, they had the postal office pick up their mail. And then my mom went on a business trip, and... And she's the only one who opens the mail? My dad saw the letter and he called me that evening. Oh. And when I when I talked to my dad, the sort of the agreement that we came up with was, well, how about we talk about this maybe a little bit now, but perhaps the three of us, my mom, my dad, and me, can have a proper conversation about it when my mom gets back from her business trip. Okay. So my dad and I did talk for a little bit, and it went... Not very well. Mm. Um, keep in mind that this is sort of the, like the, the abbreviated version, but I mean, for instance, some of the things my dad said was, um, he said, uh, you've made your views clear and we have our views. That sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is from like the, the mom and dad playbook. And, and so I said to them, uh, or to my dad, I said, and I've also changed my name. And that's not an opinion. It's my name. Yeah. Because they seem to be playing this game of, well, we're just two sides of the coin or something. Mm. As if it was, 
one person who liked the Mets and the other person who liked the Dodgers. Okay. And so I said, I've also changed my name, and that's not an opinion, it's my name. And my dad said, and it's not the name we gave you, and that's our opinion. Which, of course, is kind of missing the point entirely, because yeah, I was I mean... just stating, here's what the facts are. The opinions are not pertinent in this, in this case. And my dad was saying, well, we're going back to opinions. He knows that there's no official documentation left that lists you as that original name. You've changed your passport, you changed your driver's license. My social security card, my... That was the last you talked about it with your dad alone? Basically, yeah. I mean, and it was fairly brief because the idea being that we'd have a full conversation with the three of us. Okay. Although my one other thing my dad added at the time was uh, he was talking about the trips that they just had, the road trip with friends. And he mentioned that um, when they would see family friends that they hadn't seen for a while, that invariably there would be small talk and like, how are the kids, blah, blah, blah. And my dad said to me, and when we saw family friends who didn't know you that well, we we didn't really tell them everything about you. We just didn't think they'd be really interested. Which to me just says, I'm too embarrassed to yeah. tell my friends about my transgender daughter. Mm -hmm. Embarrassed is probably it. Yeah, there's... I can imagine them just feeling really awkward about it. and probably. Maybe they're talking to people who've never heard the word before and don't want to explain the whole thing. But, but I think you're probably right. Yeah. I think part of it is that they seem to project all of their ignorance onto everyone else. That they assume that everyone else has never heard of transgender people. And everyone else thinks that being transgender is a choice or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then how long did you have to wait until uh, your mom got on the phone? It was a little over a week ago that I talked to my dad. And then last night I talked to my mom. And it was odd that it was just her on the line. Yeah, that wasn't the plan. And likewise, there was like at least 15 or 20 minutes of just, well, probably 15 minutes of just chit chat of like, how was your trip? Blah, blah, blah. How's work going? Whatever. Mm. And so I was starting to wonder whether maybe my dad, I mean, he obviously saw the letter, but maybe he was withholding it from her. Oh. Because surely she would have brought it up by now. On one hand, it would have been nice if I could have talked to both of them. If for no other reason, then it would have given me an early warning that, because if it was both of them on the line, I would have known for sure that, oh, this is what it's about. Uh-huh, okay. But on top of that, having both of them on the line would also have meant that any arguments I put forward, if any of them were to have gone anywhere, would have been heard by both of them. Okay. Instead of if I said such and such things to one parent and then they recounted through the other, through the eye, their bigotry colored glasses, right? Yeah. But on the other hand, it was in some ways better that it was just my mom because my dad, I've come to realize, viciously interrupts people. Viciously is probably not the right word. Consistently, hmm. he will speak his mind even if you're midway through a sentence and that kind of thing. And so it can be hard to get a thought put forward if it's more than a phrase worth. So being that it was just my mom, we were able to have a more normal conversation in the sense that I could say a couple of sentences and then she would say sentences mm -hmm. like you do. Sure. And my mom started out by saying, I got your letter and read and your father and I read through it. And I thought we had a compromise. I thought we had agreed that we would call you Snooks. We had never agreed this, but in the first letter I said that it was okay if you call me Snooks, although I would like for them to start calling me Ashley. Yeah. Um, but it, they seem to take it as sort of a th me saying, well, here's a loophole and you can just use this loophole all the time and then never call me Ashley. That seemed to be their, their point of view. What I said to her was, I don't mind Snooks as an interim step, as a temporary name, but it's been two and a half years since I came out to you, and it's time for you to start calling me Ashley. And so my mom said, I did not have a choice in choosing that name. And why couldn't you just meet us halfway? 
Okay. My mom's point of view here is that Snooks Fox is halfway between my birth name and my actual name. But it's all just like tortured logic because my birth name is is a false option. It's not yeah. it's not a point on the on the scale here. Yeah. So I, I said to my mom that I've come out to uncles and aunts and cousins and friends and neighbors and coworkers. And most of the time they called me Ashley from day one. And I did my best to be lenient with you and dad for an extra two and a half years. But now it's time for you to start calling me Ashley. Mm -hmm. And my mom said, but Snooks is a nickname. People can have nicknames. Yes. What I said to her was, uh, suppose that some of your coworkers decided to call you Jennifer. Your name isn't Jennifer, it's Joan. Mm. And so it wouldn't be unreasonable for you to ask them to call you Joan. And my mom said, but there's no history there. That's not something they've done for the last 30 years. I don't even know what logical fallacy that is. It... When you're talking with your parents, it seems like you guys enter into a Socratic dialogue more often than not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's more, more than other children and parents do in the sense that I'm trying to reason with them. Yes. I then said to my mom, well, nicknames are one thing, but I'm asking you to call me by my name. Snooks folks yeah. is a lovely nickname, but it's not my name. And it's time for you to start calling me Ashley. And my mom said, it's just. The name Ashley means nothing to me, and I don't like the name, and you are my child, and I just can't believe that you didn't consult with us before doing this. I've heard that before, too. And I said to my mom, well, I know that you think that my birth name works for both men and women, but it really is a man's name that occasionally women have. And so, and so I said to them, and so, other than keeping my old name, what would you have had me do? My mom went over a couple examples, and for in this case, I'm going to pretend that my birth name was Edward, which it, it wasn't. But let's say it was Edward. My mom said then, well, you could have gone with, with D or Wardy. <laughs> These are the equivalent <laughs> of her suggestions, where it's just like... She's chopping syllables out of my birth name in different permutations. And like, that's a name, isn't it? You could call yourself that. It seemed to be that she not only really dislikes the name Ashley, but she wants to hang on to any remnant of what's no longer there. But I'm curious, when she says, I don't like the name, does that mean if she made a friend with that name, she would call them something else? Well, it's funny you should mention that. Because my brother and his girlfriend, Margaret, recently got engaged. Oh, nice. Yeah, congratulations. And I said to my mom, Adrian and Margaret are engaged, and they're going to be married at some point, and maybe in a few years, they'll have children. And suppose that they named their, their daughter Susan. And what if you didn't like the name Susan? What would you call their child? Would it be something else? And my mom said, well, but in this case, it's, it wasn't a name that I had chosen. Okay. All right. So the I don't like that name is really not a part of her argument. How do you mean? Because she answered your question with something totally unrelated. She doesn't like Ashley because she didn't choose it. For you. I, I think of it as sort of like the court system, where you can have state courts that overrule local courts and... The Supreme Court overrules state courts, federal mm. courts, whatever. And so in her mind, it seems to be that if my brother and his to-be wife had a child with a name that my mom didn't like, that their rights as parents would overrule her dislike. That's, I think that's what my mom is saying. Or, more likely, she would say, I can't believe you didn't consult with me before naming your child. <sighs> That is possible. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's possible.
So she, she goes over these these goofy alternative names I could have chosen. Mm. And I said to her, well, Ashley is the name that I chose. It's a feminine name and it fits my gender and I really like the name. And I already spent all this money in paperwork. Right, yeah. I went to a, I went to a judge. Uh, yeah, I did, totally. And my mom said, well, Ashley isn't the name we gave you. Yeah. So, so this is it. And this isn't something we're going to work on. Yeah. Yeah. And that... I, I didn't reveal... I didn't want to groan on the phone, but that, mm. that well, really hurt me. Yeah. And I asked my mom, I said, well... Slooks is a very nice nickname, as, as nicknames go, but when you have guests over, for instance, how do you refer to me? I, I worry that you're not calling me Snooksbox and that those guests would be confused. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or even they're not we're saying, oh, our daughter. Right, sure. You might say the other thing. And my mom said, this is now assuming my uh, birth name was Eddie, which it wasn't. Well, we refer to you as Eddie Ashley. And we're doing this for you. Mm. Like, like, as if it was a hyphenated last name, but she's taking my birth name and my actual name and just, like, pushing them together. That never occurred to me as an option. No, because you're a reasonable human being. Yeah, that probably doesn't confuse anyone. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's like Jekyll and Hyde. It, yes. And, or Hyde and Jekyll. What I said to my mom was, but whether you may or may not like Ashley, Eddie is no longer my name. That she yeah. seems to be tacking this on as if, like a hyphenated last name from a marriage or something. But that's weird. It's not like you're joining two things. It's my birth name is in the past, and now I have the name Ashley. And so I said to her, "Well, I just worry that guests could be confused that." I said to her, many guests take on the role of, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. That if you're unsure how to behave in someone's house, you look to your hosts and you follow their lead. Hmm. Like taking off your shoes at the door? I don't actually have a lot of experience with manners. Yeah, that, that could be a, an example. Sure, taking off your shoes at the door maybe. Yeah. So I was saying that if, for example, some aunts or uncles come over and that I've come out to them, but if they see that you're calling me Eddie Ashley, they might be confused about what name they're supposed to be calling me. Sure. And my mom said, oh, I don't, I don't see how that could be an issue. So basically she's just like, yeah, I know. They can use it as a hyphenate, but not by itself. That, that really doesn't make any sense to me. That seems to be coming from a place of stubbornness. Yes. And whatever the opposite of understanding is. What's the opposite of compassion? It's uh, it's that. Intolerance? Bigotry? Sure, sure. Yeah. Of course, in the odd part was my mom was saying, well, we refer to you as, as birth name Ashley, and we're doing this for you, as if this was like a big favor to me. Did she, and, but, but she says unequivocally that it's not as a stopgap it's not a measure along the path of calling you just ashley they're including ashley to what's the word um to humor me humor you yes yes yeah <sighs> and i said but whether you like it like ashley or don't like ashley uh birth name is no longer my name mm -hmm. and my mom said we are your parents and we have the prerogative to give you your name and I replied wow. saying, and I'm an adult, and it's my prerogative to change my name. Yeah. My mom said, I just wish you could meet us halfway on this. I don't want to lose you. I just don't see why you have to be so adamant about this. And I said, I find it odd that asking to be called by your name is thought of as being adamant. Hmm. At this point... And this is what I continued saying. At this point, Ashley is the name on my driver's license, my birth certificate, and my passport. It's my name. And I said to her, um, this is the name that I'm going to have for the next 50 years, or however long I have left on this earth. And my mom said, 
fine. <laughs> this is the part where if my if my mom was nine years old, she'd be folding her arms and snapping her feet. Yeah, rrr, yeah rrr, sure. Rrr. And yeah. to be honest, that was my gut knee jerk reaction when I saw you on Twitter saying some of the things that she said to you. My I, my first thought was that's childish. It is. Yeah, and it's not often that you're in a position to tell your friends that their parents need to grow up. Right. And so my mom went on to say that I don't like the name, and it means nothing to me. I'm not going to get used to it. I'm not going to work on it. I just wish we could get past this name thing instead of getting hung up on it. Which, of course, is odd because, hey, that's my line. <laughs> so I said, well, I wish we could get past this too. And if everyone were to call me Ashley, we could put this behind us. Sure. And my mom said, but we are not everyone. We're your parents, and I can't see why you can't meet us halfway. And so I said, my name is Half Ashley. Halfway being your birth name hyphenated with Ashley? Or halfway being Snooksbooks? Halfway being Snooksbooks. And because mm. really, they seem to think that all that matters is what they say when they're around me. Yeah. Because one part that I... As opposed to what they're actually thinking all the time. Right. Because one part that I forgot to mention earlier was when I asked about, well, what do you refer to me as when you have guests over? And I think what my mom initially said was, well, I don't see why you'd be interested what you, how we refer to you when guests are over. Yeah. What do you care about that? Same reason I would care. Right. I know. Because it shows that they respect me for who I am, or, or it would show that. At any rate, my mom said, I can't see why you can't just meet us halfway. Mm -hmm. And I said, my name is Ashley, and if you'd wanted to call me by, my, by a nickname occasionally, that would be one thing. But meeting you halfway would be for you to call me Ashley half the time. Calling me by a nickname is not meeting halfway. Okay. My mom said, I just wish you could come around on this. And maybe someday you can. Which also is what I'm supposed to be saying to her. As you're recounting the story, it doesn't sound like she actually got uh, outwardly didn't... angry. Hmm. Did Was there a change in the tone of her voice at all? My mom and my dad are of the school of the British stiff upper lip. And so hmm. they take pride in concealing their anger to the extent that they can. Okay. And so in this case, my mom, she did raise her, the volume of her voice and that kind of thing. Certainly enough that I would notice it, but it wasn't maybe what you would expect if this were to be a sitcom version of this conversation. And that was about it with the call with my... Really? Okay, well let me ask the, to me, obvious question. At, at no point did your uh ultimatum from the letter come into conversation the don't visit me unless you're going to call me ashley yeah part of the letter. that part did come in my mom okay. said that she felt uh upset and she felt hurt that i would give us this thing about uh don't come and visit me unless you do this yeah and my mom saw it as an ultimatum, which i guess it kind of is but it's, it's it was as if she felt that I was being unfair about things. Whereas, of course, I'm just asking her to call me by my name. Is it still up in the air, then? Whether they're coming to visit? Did she take your request slash ultimatum, just dismiss it, and say, well, I guess we'll talk about this later? Well, that's the thing, is that they don't announce it six months ahead of time. Hmm. Simply, like, six weeks ahead of time, they'll say, hey, we'd like to come by on this weekend. Okay. And of course I say, oh, that would be lovely. And whereas I'm thinking, oh, now you tell me? Six weeks? I mean, because that's enough to require some schedule shuffling, for example, to free up an entire weekend for that. Uh -huh. So it's not as if they have planned out a visit ahead of time. There's no visit planned as of yet. And so if they were to be visiting me in, say, July or August, oh, I see. this is around the time where they would be inviting themselves for that. Okay, yeah. So they haven't invited themselves, and it's not clear whether maybe that time hadn't naturally come up yet, or if they've just taken this thing into account. Yeah. 
And you didn't ask. No, I didn't ask. No. Because why make why make the call more painful than it already is? Right. But on top of that, my parents seem to take the view of Ashley is is happy with us. Then Ashley sends us a letter, and she's angry for a little while, and then things go back to normal. And then she sends oh. a letter, wash, rinse, repeat. They seem to think of this is something that just happens every year, and then blows over, and then everything's fine again. Oh. And so, yeah, okay, That I, I didn't really fully absorb that. They felt for a time that you had an agreement. So this seems to be coming out of nowhere. Yeah. For them, yeah. Right. So I can't let things go on as they have been. No. And so the next time they call, and usually it'll be, sometimes I'll talk to both parents in a week, like maybe one will call on Tuesday and one will call on Friday or something. Oh. Yeah. So, but it's at least every week that okay. I talk to one of them. And the next time they call, I'll say, hi, this is Ashley. And then my dad or my mom will say, hi, Snooks. How are okay. you? Or something. And what I'm going to say is, I'd like you to call me by my name. And at that point, if they either say nothing or start making excuses... I will tell them, I'd like you to call me by my name, and when you're ready to do that, we can continue this conversation, mm. and then I'll end the call. Oh, it's just making me tense hearing that. Yeah. It's mm. not something I'm looking forward to doing, but I think that I have no other cards left to play, mm -hmm. because I want them to understand how much it hurts me, not only that they're not calling me my name around me but that they're not calling me by my name or using the right pronouns when right. they're around other people given that you can't control that second part what if they did start calling you ashley when you were around consistently but didn't with other people would you want to know i would want to know because one of the things there's a portion where we were talking about pronouns with my mom. And I said, well, setting aside names and such, are you using female pronouns for me? And my mom said something like, I don't know if we're doing that or something. Basically, she said no. And I said, well, I, I would like you to do that. And you said, and I think my mom said, I think she gave some excuse about how it would be like, oh, that's a lot of things to explain to people when I talk to them or whatever. And so what I mentioned to my mom was, well, let's suppose that you meet a new friend through your tennis club and uh, she's super friendly and so you decide to invite her for Thanksgiving. And then supposing I come for Thanksgiving. And then might your friend find it confusing when you've been describing one person and she sees a daughter that you have. Yeah. Mm. And my mom was obviously kind of stumped by that one because that was just dead air. Seems like something she would have considered by now. You would think so. All right, so you've transitioned a long time ago. There are only two people left in your life that are clinging to the old ways. Yeah. And they refuse to change. That's right. And so we're at a point where if they continue doing that, you're going to stop communicating with them. I'm not going to continue talking to them over the phone yeah. when they're not calling me by my name. What I would like to think would happen is that they would come to their senses and realize, oh, we're going to lose contact with our daughter if we don't figure this out. But maybe that doesn't happen. And then when Thanksgiving rolls around... Do I go visit my parents for that? Because I, one of the things I like about Thanksgiving is that I get to see my brother, who I don't see very often, and now also his fiance, Margaret, but also aunts and uncles and cousins, all of whom call me by the right name. Does she go by Margaret? Yes, she goes by Margaret. I don't like that name. I'm going to call her Ned. <laughs> Oh, ha, ha. I 
see what you did there. Yeah. So Thanksgiving is kind of a tough one because on one hand, the Thanksgiving Day would be ha would have a lot of buffers around me of people who are supportive, but my parents themselves wouldn't be, and so inevitably, if I came the night before, or stayed an extra day afterward, or whatever, I'd be stuck with them. But what's actually even more tricky is that my brother mentioned to me that now that he and Margaret are engaged, they're thinking about sort of alternating with the holidays. So, for example, the last year or two, my brother would stay maybe three days to see my parents in December, and then three more days to see Margaret's parents who live in Michigan. Okay. And that was just basically wearing my brother out. So he was saying, well, how about, like, if Margaret and Adrian come out my parents for Thanksgiving, and then for December, they go to Margaret's parents, which is actually totally reasonable, I think. But it would mean, though, that for December... I would be stuck with just my parents if I were to come. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's even more up in the air for me that if my parents aren't calling me Ashley by Thanksgiving, then it might be a bit of a toss up because it would at least be aunts and uncles there who would call me by the right name. Okay. But over December, if they're not calling me Ashley, I don't know whether I would want to come. Sure. There are third options, like bringing a friend with you, but we can talk about that later. Hmm. Hmm. I know I brought this up before, but I'm just curious. What are the chances, do you think, that they will continue to talk to you without using any names at all, and uh, including nicknames, and just say things instead like, Hello, darling, or hi, you. I don't think they would do that. Do you think that they would insist on addressing you just because it's the way they talk or possibly because uh, they want to remind you that they're in control of what they call you? Yes, they want to impress upon me that they are my parents and I am their child. Yeah. But of course, we're both adults and... Yeah. I'm supporting myself, and I can make these decisions for myself. Yeah. Going back to the hypothetical, if my, if my birth name was Eddie, and let's say my last name was Smith, my mom was brainstorming things like, well, what if we call you, like, ES or something? Hmm. Oh, like my initials? And I said to her, well, I don't call you um, JS. Yeah. Because I call you Mom, because that's what she asked me to call her and so i do wow yeah well i'm sorry thanks i thought they would have fixed it by now you would think so it's just bizarre one of the things i thought might impress upon them was the part where i mentioned that i've come out to aunts and uncles and neighbors and co-workers and in most cases within the first day they figured out how to call me Ashley. Yeah. Maybe by the second day, they're kind of working on it. Mm hmm But I've given my parents an extra two and a half years. And so I've gone out of my way, perhaps gone out of my way too much mm -hmm. to be lenient with them because they're my parents and so on. But yeah. it's just two and a half years is enough. Okay, so no more letter writing plans? Well, I can't rule it out, but at this point, I'm not going to talk to them over the phone if they don't call me Ashley, and I don't know yet whether I would visit them, so there aren't a lot of steps remaining between here and the nuclear option. Yeah. How is everything else going? Things people are going at, all right. People I'm, at work okay? I've been doing some contracting work off and on. And yeah. uh, just now, actually, my contracting has kind of tapered off for a bit. And so I've got a bit of time to my hands. And it looks like maybe in a month from now, the company that I've been doing contracting work for might have some more work for me. Okay. 
Um, but otherwise, I mean, transition wise, everybody at work has been normal and all of your friends have not all of a sudden decided to be weird about stuff. No, things have been good. I mean, at this contracting job, they put me on a client site and it's fine. I mean, people treat me just like any other woman in the office. Because one of the things that my mom mentioned back in December was something like, and when you go on interviews, don't bring up the transgender thing. Just leave that out of it. Which, of course, I haven't. I told her, it's like, well, I would have no reason to bring that up. Yeah. And I don't because I'm just, hi, I'm Ashley. Oh, this is Ashley. She's coming for the interview. And that's like, okay, great. Besides your parents using the right name and the right pronouns is there anything that's that you're still waiting to change that you don't have control over i suppose that for my connecticut birth certificate that wouldn't require surgery of some kind yeah is that important to you the birth certificate <laughs> not really a anything that you would need a birth certificate for the passport pretty much overrides it you're exactly right that in, there's there's hardly any circumstance i can think of where i would need a birth certificate for something where i couldn't use another document instead yeah i'm still trying to figure out my how to change the name on my house title yeah no that sounds important yeah and i called up the mortgage company and they just give me the runaround about like oh i think that's on file with the county and like okay well which who do i call at the county oh i don't know it's like, hey, motherfuckers, this is your business. Like, yeah, but it's not their job. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> An option that my friend Andrea suggested is that I could try calling the title company that handled the title stuff for mine. Because they might be able to if either help me track down who has the title and how I change it, or I might be able to use their services to have them file the change yeah. of title or whatever the heck. Uh, call call yeah. everyone. You're paying for the phone. Yeah, those social anxiety disorder phone calls are not fun. Oh, um, pretend you're someone else. <laughs> Bad example. Uh, <laughs> this is Jacques Rousseau. Ashley, I want you to lighten the mood and show me something girly. Okay, yeah. I mean ladylike. Either way. Okay. Can you see my dog? Can you see my dog? Say hello, hello doggy. Who's that your dog? Hello, Who's your dog? I want to go pee. I want to go pee so much. I want to go pee so much. I like that your dog's squishy face. That's so nice. Squishy, uh, squishy, squishy, squishy. It was a good dog. Teach, you better teach me something ladylike quickly. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay. Do you, want, do you know how many jobbies I have? Uh, there better jobbies. be two jobbies. Okay. So, first jobby. These are plastic razor blades. Plastic razor blades? I know. It's from a company called Scrape Right. Okay. Yep. And it's like razor blade shape. And it, uh, I, it doesn't seem like it's as sharp because you're, you of the way you were holding it just now. It actually comes in three different hardnesses. Like it comes with a pack of like 24 of them for $6. And I only need like one. But at any rate, Great. what's nice is that it is, it's pointy. I mean, if you poke yourself, it's going to hurt. But it's not sharp enough to break skin. Wow. Yeah. What do you use it for? Well, you can use this is great for scraping. This is basically your thumbnail analog or your other fingernail uh, analog. Sure. So when your nails are pretty and painted, you don't have to mess them up by scraping stuff. So like if you've got the, the price sticker on a thing, you can go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or when you're painting your nails and you get a little bit on like the cuticle bit you can scrape that off there uh, but i neat. also use this for example for when i'm in the shower the next morning after having painted my nails the night before and if i have of course normally i might have little bits of polish along the cuticles and things and mm. you can just rub that off in the shower but this is also handy for that great yeah and there and it comes in like three different hardnesses and did you uh, okay and the orange one is the least hard it's supposed to be I think they say as hard as a human nail, which is okay. Yeah, interesting. It's it's basically sharp enough that you can remove things, but not sharp enough that it'll mess up your whole like car paint, for example. Way to go, science. Yeah, I know. And then second jobby. This is gonna seem dumb, maybe, but okay, I've got this guy, which is one of those shoe insert liner things. 
You know what I'm talking uh, about? What my, what my mother used to call a footy. That's actually a good name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just call them shoe liners. The footies are nice. Sim similar to the thing you would put on your feet when you're trying on shoes, yeah? Yeah. I like that okay. basically, yeah. And these are, you could find them anywhere, but these ones are from Kohl's. From Apartment yeah, 9? The Apartment 9, which I think is just the Kohl's house brand. And I like these much better than, for example, the ones from Target. And you'd think that they would all be the same, but among other things, these come in a pack of three, Target's come in a pack of like one or two, so these are actually better value. Yeah. But more pertinently, both brands purport to be like one size fits all, sizes uh -huh. seven through ten, shoe or whatever. Sure. But the Target one, me being like a size 12 and a half, like it's kind of stretching metaphorically as it were uh -huh. the range. The Target one has a propensity to fall off my foot because it's... Okay. Comes off the heel? Yeah, it comes off the yeah. heel because it's not quite big enough. But these ones are actually... Super! And the other thing that's actually nice that the Target ones don't have either is that right where your heel goes, I don't know if you can see this, there's like a little rubber pad. Okay, yeah. That creates friction and keeps this on your heel. Great. So they didn't just slip off, which is like, which is so great. In which, I've never seen this on other brands of these. But yeah, the ones either. from Kohl's, this Apartment 9 thing, have it. The one last thing I like about these is that they're, they're cotton. So they breathe well. Oh, nice. Whereas I think the ones from Target are like cotton polyester or something, which isn't bad. It's not like as if it was full polyester, but still. Yeah, yeah. Cotton will breathe better. So these are just like a total find. And this one, it actually, $12. Still has a price tag on it. And uh, I think Kohl's is a national chain. I think so. Great. Thanks for showing me that stuff and for filling us in on what's happened. Um, keep us updated. Well, it's been super fun chatting, Jay. Yeah, call, call me on my new iPhone anytime. I will do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's a new iPhone. La, la, la. Good night, Jay.